we're going to just chat a little bit about Winstead Hill and what took place here, and then we, we can go out and we can walk around and look at the monuments and so forth. But anyway, uh, Winstead Hill, this was Hood's command post during the Battle of Franklin. This is Winstead Hill over your left here, and right to the right of it is another hill called Breezy Hill. And so, uh, as I said, this was the command post. Um, Hood came up here about uh, 12 o'clock on the day of the battle. And uh, as you know, as we said before, before that, uh, the night before they had been at Spring Hill, and uh, Hood had uh, uh, hoped to cross the Franklin Pike there and cut off uh, all of Schofield's troops, but because of uh, terrible command management, uh, when they went to cut the pike off, uh, there was a, a brigade on the hill in Spring Hill and uh, some artillery there, and they were firing on them. So uh, Hood had uh, Claiborne's tr troops turned to the north to take that uh, area out of there. And at the same time, uh, he, he gave him that command to do that, but then as he rode south, he came across Bates's division. He told them to move across the Columbia Pike, which they did, and they had him uh, cut off. But then, because Cheatham didn't know what Hood told Bates, uh, he sent a courier later when they were having trouble getting past uh, the brigade on the hill at, at Spring Hill, and he went down and got Bates and turned him north too, so they were all on this side of the Columbia Pike. And of course, Schofield's troops moved right by him, and so he was, uh, extremely angry about that uh, the, the next day and he had a big breakfast meeting at uh, Travilla Mansion there that was just as a little piece of history was later owned by uh, George Jones and Tammy Wanette and uh, George in one of his drunken stupors one night got his caterpillar out and went out and pushed down all the big trees that were on the place but anyway he had a, a meeting there with his generals and they came they came north here and he got here about noon and he looked through his telescope and stuff up at the, the Union Works which are about a mile and a half or two miles uh, up the Columbia Pike here and uh, being Hood I don't think he took a very good look at anything he already had in mind in his head that he was going to launch a frontal attack here and he knew who was going to do that so the first corps that came up was um, uh, Stewart's Corps and so rather than having Stewart's Corps move forward and screen for the corps behind him. And also on this hill at that time was Wagner's Brigade uh, doing skirmishing work here. And so Hood kind of thought that's where maybe where the, the main forces were right here. But anyway, they chased Wagner off of the hill and he went scattling back this way. Uh, and then uh, what he did is he had, he moved. Uh, Instead of keeping Stuart there, he had Stuart move off to the left here towards what's called the Lewisburg Pike and beyond Breezy Hill. And uh, when he did that, uh, then Wagner's troops came back and occupied the hills here again. So if he would have kept Stuart up here to do the screening and so forth, he probably could have moved forward and attacked much earlier in the day because uh, uh, Schofield had just gotten here at night, so he had started building his earthworks in the morning. So the, the battle didn't actually take place until 4 o'clock. And uh, so Hood had this thing too because he blamed Cheatham, uh, Brown, and Claiborne for the misgivings at Spring Hill. Rather than have Stewart's Corps attack, which was up, he had them move to the left. And he had, because he wanted to punish uh, Cheatham, uh, Claiborne, and uh, Brown and have them make the attack here. So. That's what they did, and here, this is the Columbia Pike, which is the main road that goes up for a mile and a half or two miles. And of course, none of this stuff was here in that day. But anyway, Brown's uh, division was uh, positioned on this side of the Columbia Pike in here, and on that side of the Columbia Pike was Claiborne's division. And if you look at your maps, those this area concentrated right up by the Harpeth River where they had the, uh, the barricades, and he moved uh, uh, Stewart was off to the left here, which when we go to the Carrington Plantation, that was the area that they came up now. A little bit after uh, Hood came up here, Forrest came up here, and he had he was doing scouting work down along the Harpeth, and, and he saw what the Union had there, and he said it would be insane to make an attack here. And Claiborne, when he came up, same thing, he sat on a stump up here, 
and he looked at the earthworks up there and he saw what formidable there were three three tier deep um, um, barricades um, up by the Carter House and also there was uh, <laughs> massive hedgerows and and whatnot there so they they went to Hood and and tried to talk him out of making the attack but he had it in his mind that that's what he was going to do and Forrest also suggested just below the Lewisburg Pikeways there's a ford where they could afford uh, the river and Forrest said give me one division of men and my men and I can flank Schofield who's dug in here and get up to something called Hollow Gap where they could have cut him off again but again Hood had nothing to do with that so Anyway, that's, that was kind of the layout, and he had one other division move to the, uh, further to the west here, which was Carter Creek Pike, and uh, that was Bates's division. So they really had a three-pronged attack, and when they came up, well, and when Claiborne and his men came up, when he sent uh, Stewart off towards the Lewisburg Pike, uh, Wagner's men reoccupied uh, the hills here, so when Claiborne and and those people came up again it delayed their getting into formation here and delayed the attack to much later in the afternoon so that, that was the basic uh, setup to uh, what went on here and of course when Claiborne came up he drove Wagner back <laughs> once again or, or Wagner left the hills here but he went back about I don't know it's half a mile three quarters of a mile to something that's called Pivot's Knob and it's kind of a rise there and he formed a formation on that hill and he stayed there when these massive columns of confederate troops were coming up and so while it delayed the uh, the attack a little bit it was actually very disastrous because once they saw so many confederates coming these brigades said we got to get the hell out of here so they headed back for the barricades and so as the confederates came across the plain the union couldn't open up with their artillery and their musketry on the confederates because they would have killed their own men so actually uh that was one of the the larger things that led to, to union losses because they if, if eventually had to open up the the barricades there to let them through so so that was the basic uh, setup from here they, as he came across there they were in two brig two brigade formations and as he got down further he saw the concentration of what they have so he actually put his men into column till he got up much closer and then he spread his uh, brigades out and in fact he had a premonition of death because he talked to general govan when he was sitting on the stump here and govan asked him what you thought and he said there won't General, there won't be many of us going back to Arkansas, but we're here and we will die like men. So anyway, that's kind of an overview and we can go out and see where the command position is. There's some really nice uh, monuments here. There's monuments that were, uh, as Eric will tell us later, there were uh, six Confederate generals killed here at Franklin and there's monuments to each of them here and to a lot of other things. So.
Let's see the, the pike that's right, right here, correct? Right? Yep, this is the role we're yeah. looking at right yeah. here. The rangers to the right? Yeah, but they had... Uh, and so the, the, uh, the river's yeah. running diagonally was that Union or out there? Out there? Us. Union. So they had, they had lots of artillery right here, so as soon as they stepped off, as soon as they stepped off, they were firing on Hand to hand fighting was. Yeah. So Wagner had put his two brigades right here. Yep. So they were immediately routed and they turned and all the men started running. Well, Claiborne and Brown were no idiots. They got their guys right in behind them. So they got a free ride. They got a free ride right to the Right to the lines? Right to the lines. All right. So it could have been much worse. Yes. Um, it's tough to see here, but when you when we're driving, you see what today, yeah, the general and it'll be uh, more very obvious. Okay. Oh, so it's not that tall, tall and way out here. No, 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 it's just right here. All right, yeah, it's right there. Where is it in relation to that white water tower? Uh, closer, just, just yeah, way, way closer, and just beyond the buildings, the, all these white buildings, you think? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's even with the town, so the town is. You know where the where you see the trees are. Sure. So it's just straight to the left. So presumably. And again, it doesn't make any sense from here, but when we get up is there. Is the fort still there? Yeah. Well. Yeah. It's still there. So we're talking about. Up there. I mean, there's a much there, but you can see the land. That's really kind of hard to tell because beyond that, you know, there's a little up there. Yeah, yeah that's, for you. that's where I called you from when I was here last time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's see what, what's his name? He came in from this side. Yeah, Stuart. He got pounded really heavy by these guys. Okay. So he thought he could come in on the flank here if they were so occupied over yeah. there, but these guys were really blasting him from up in Fort Greene. So they kept Stuart out of it. Yeah. 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 Now the, the river was swollen and the bridge mm -hmm. was out, is that what yeah. it was? Yeah, up here this railroad bridge here was, so they had to lay bridges, they had to lay a bridge across the river to get out of here. <laughs> oh, okay. So, All right. Yeah. I appreciate a three-dimensional map. Yeah. yeah. Bryce, of course, stepped on board. Thomas stepped on board. Christine as well. And uh, Gary is our neat, latest addition to our delegation and will be following us for this afternoon at least uh, with a minivan in tow right behind the bus. So he's going to follow us and then join us for uh, dinner tomorrow and be at the hotel and be on the bus tomorrow as well. But wanted to give him a chance because we all know you have to do it and tell two jokes, I understand, um, <laughs> to introduce yourself to the, this loving group of Minnesotans. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'm Gary Ryder, and uh, I'm from Minneapolis as well, and my son lives down here. That's why I didn't ride the bus. I've driven down to Nashville a number of times. My son works for Vanderbilt. He lives about a block and a half from Shies Hill, and I uh, actually bought him that Shies Hill pile painting because years ago I worked for the Attorney General's office and one of the first things I did was walk into the governor's atrium, 
reception room and see that painting and I just uh, couldn't imagine that I hadn't ever heard of it or seen it before. And uh, so uh, Shai's Hill has always been a favorite of mine. I'm happy to join the group, but I'm going to uh, drive my van behind the bus and then I'll join your group tomorrow. Anybody want to ride with Gary? Yeah. No, I just You're love this. Van, right? It's a wonderful outing. <laughs> yeah. I look forward to the whole thing.